Okay, so welcome. We're going to be looking at roots of polynomials today. Uh, I'm Connor. I'm going to be one of the further math teachers next year. Hi, I'm Rob. Uh, I teach further mathematics, mainly in the second year. So I'm here with Connor today to look at this roots of polynomials with you. Okay, so we'll get started then. So here's some questions for you to have a go at. I know it says mini whiteboards. If you've got a mini whiteboard, you can use it if you want, but pen paper is perfectly fine. And for each of these things, I want you to write down a quadratic that has these roots here starts off fairly straightforward might get a bit trickier towards the end if you want a bit of a hint i'll go through this first one have a think how do you find roots of quadratics normally you normally get into brackets first so i guess i guess what we've got here then with you you answers if your answer is five and four you can't have x plus five in the bracket can you because that'll no, give that you work. minus, that'll give you the minus, ah, all right, I think I've got what's going on. So hopefully you've got this as a starting point for that first one. So once you've got there, you can expand that out. You can get x squared, take 9x, and plus 20. That is, of course, only one possible solution. Rob, could you tell me another solution? I guess you could double everything. Would that, yeah. would that work? Yeah, you could just double everything. Or, yeah, or... Well, it'd be weird halving everything, but you could halve it or times it by three. Yeah, I guess that makes more sense, though, the one you gave. So, yeah, because any you can basically times it by any scale factor, two or half, whatever, because it basically just adds a number at the front here. So this one would just be two lots of X take five, X take four. And that still works. That's still the same solutions there. So let's go through the answer to these. For two and three, we could have X take two, X take three which is x squared, take 5x, plus 6. Uh, if we wanted a different one then, we could do just what Rob did before, we could just double everything. So we'll get 2x squared, take 10x, plus 12. What do you think I'm going to do for this one, Rob, when I don't know what the actual numbers are? I guess we're just, instead of using 2 and 3 like you did before, I think you just write it in with that. That's an alpha and beta, aren't they? They're the Greek, Greek letters for A and B. Yeah, yeah. they are. Okay. So if I expand that then, so I'll get x squared, take alpha x, take beta x, plus alpha beta. And then I don't particularly like that, so I can combine those two together. So I can do x squared, take alpha plus beta, oops, x, plus alpha beta. I guess that gives you something x squared, then some number like you had before, like that 18. Mm -hmm. So then you get yeah. your constant bit at the end. Yeah, so you just, if this is just for a general alpha and beta. So if you match up with any of the others, when alpha was five and beta was four, this is just um, five plus four, then a minus stuck at the front, which is minus nine, and that's just five times four. I've got you, yeah, because if for your answer for the first one, the nine is the roots added together, but negative, which mm -hmm. is what you've just shown me there at the bottom. And then the number at the end is times them together. So yeah. Yeah, so if I was trying to get one with, let's say, 7 and 8, then I'd have x squared, then I'd add 7 and 8, which is 15. So it'll be x squared minus 15x plus mm -hmm. 56. Yeah, exactly. It's a nice, easy way of doing this if you can remember that kind of identity. And if this last one then, so this is going to be exactly the same as before, but rather than minus alpha, it's going to be minus 2 alpha and x minus 2 beta x squared and it's going to be two lots of alpha plus beta and it's going to be plus four alpha beta yeah so you've doubled the roots from the one above haven't you yeah so on the on the axes the two roots where it crosses the x-axis are going to be yeah twice as far well twice as far apart there yeah, essentially what we've done by doubling all the roots, this is a transformation, essentially. We've essentially stretched uh, everything by a scale factor of two in the X direction. But you can see that doesn't just times everything here by two. It does a slightly different thing here. Let's oh, actually have a look at that. It by, yeah, if it times it by two, that's that's in the Y direction, isn't it? Because your answers are getting bigger. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a quick, yeah, let's have a quick look at that, actually. I've got a GeoGebra file we can have. Let's just keep that for a sec. Uh, here we go. So this is essentially what we've done. So if we had the roots alpha, beta, and gamma, and I then had a new equation with roots 2 alpha, 2 beta, 2 gamma, so 
gamma is just a third one I picked because it's so cubic, uh, it would look like this. And as I increase them, we're just stretching in the x direction. Oh, neat. Yeah, I can see what we've done there. So yeah. why is this useful then? Why, like? Well, it's useful because if you sometimes you don't really care about what the actual roots are. You want to know something about them. So rather than having to go through the whole process of solving it to find roots and then working backwards from those roots to do something else, to do something else, to do something else, we can sort of skip all those middle steps and just say, well, hang on, if I know the roots are alpha, beta and gamma, and then my new ones are two alpha, two beta, two gamma, I don't need to find them out and draw the new graph. I can just go straight away. I know that's a transformation stretch scale factor two in the x direction. So oh, so you can get the new equation a lot quicker. Yeah. Right. So let's try and formalize what we've just done there. So trying to match up the idea of these roots, the sum of the roots and the product of the roots with the general quadratic. And here's a general quadratic, ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, and I'm going to rewrite this slightly. I'm going to divide everything by a because we don't really like this a in front of the x squared. It just causes all sorts of issues. So it's much easier if I just rewrite this as x squared plus b over a x plus c over a. And I can do that because this is just an expression. It doesn't equal anything at the moment. So I can just divide everything by a. That just makes it a bit nicer. So when we started with this idea, so two generic roots alpha and beta, when we expanded that, we got this. I'm just rewriting what we had before. Mm -hmm. So we can now match up the coefficients. So this is another reason why I've got rid of the a at the front, because it was just a one there. But we can match up these coefficients. So I can say that b over a is the same as minus the sum of the roots. And I can say that c over a is the same as the product of the roots. I'm just going to rewrite that one slightly and just move the negative onto this side. Just because it looks a little bit neater. So straight away from there, if I know what the roots are, I can immediately tell you what the coefficient of x and the constant is on the end without having to do any real working out at all. So obviously that's something you could do already. If you have the roots, you can just expand it. But there are some situations, especially when you have got start including algebra and things, where that's a bit more time consuming than you really want to. And especially when you get to further maths, you really want to be very efficient with your algebra, very efficient with your methods. So this kind of method, which saves you a bit of time, can be very, very useful. So a bit like what I was doing before when I picked seven and eight, I've just done. I just did that, didn't I? I just added them together and got alpha plus beta. Mm -hmm. And then I times them together and got C over A, but I stuck that negative in front because of when you expanded it out you just had a minus alpha x and a minus beta x so that's why we've got that negative here we go this is essentially what we've just proved we proved that the sum of the roots is minus b over a and the product of the roots is c over a we are going to use these two rules in just a moment so if you've got a bit of paper it might be worth just jotting these down just in the corner of your page because then we'll look at how we can apply these in a moment Let's have a look at this question here. So write down the sum and product of the roots of the following quadratic equation, 2z squared plus 7z plus 6 equals 0. Normally, these questions explicitly tell you not to find the roots themselves. They are only looking for the sum and the product. If you solve this normally, you wouldn't get the marks. They'd explicitly want you to do this method. So let me just rewrite my two rules. So I've got them. There we go. So if I want the sum of the roots, that's added up together. So alpha plus beta is going to be minus b, so that's minus 7 over 2. And the product of the root, which is the two numbers times together, is c over a, so that's 6 over 2, which is just 3. And as you can see, that's a lot quicker than actually having to try and solve that quadratic and then add them together and then multiply. OK, so here's two questions for you to have a go at then. Uh, we've got two ones there, so this is just a standard quadratic. Uh, you might notice, though, if you're doing a bit of algebra in your head, this is not going to factorise nicely at all. So if you're trying to factorise that one, you'd run into some major issues. For part B, you'll want to rearrange this one. It's a bit nicer, the actual uh, quadratic you get out, but you're going to expand it, get everything onto the right side first, and then do your working out. So pause the video here, have a go at that one. 
Okay, go on, Rob. Do you want to talk me through how we do this first one? Yeah, so for the first one, uh, for the sum of the roots, it was the number in front of the x divided by that coefficient, the leading coefficient of the x squared, isn't it? So it's going to yeah. be, well, it would be minus a fifth, but we make this one negative. So that one's a fifth, so one over five. Yeah. And then for the product, we keep the negative in because of how the brackets expanded. So that is minus one over five. Yeah. And if you want to do that by hand, I can tell you now, it'll probably take you a good five, 10 minutes because that's not a nice quadratic to solve. So you can see we've done in, what, 20 seconds what it would have taken you about five minutes to do by standard methods. What about part B? How would we, could we rewrite this into a nicer form? I guess we've got to expand that bracket out at the front. So we get x squared plus 8x and then equals 4 minus 3x and then make it like the one on part A. So put everything on the left. So you get x squared plus 11x and then minus 4 equals 0. Oh, and that's dead easy. The sum, therefore, is minus 11. So alpha plus beta is minus 11. And alpha beta is... It's still the minus of that. Yeah, you don't go out to that one, do we? So that's minus four. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, as a bit of a nicer quadratic, that one. Uh, I still think it's a little bit messy to solve off the top of my head. Yeah, it would yeah, be, it's, yeah, yeah. It still won't, yeah, it still won't factorise nicely. It's a little bit nice in the first one. But again, much, much quicker to do it this way. OK, let's have a look at something in the opposite direction now. So we've got alpha and beta are the roots of 2x squared take x take 4 equals 0. Without finding the roots, find out what alpha squared plus beta squared is and what 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta is. If you reckon you can have a go at this, you might do. You can pause the video. Otherwise, we'll have a quick talk about this. So I want to somehow get alpha squared plus beta squared from either alpha plus beta or alpha beta. Because I know how to work out those two. So if I can get alpha squared plus beta squared from those in some way, I can then work this out. Rob, have you got any ideas? Yeah, because I guess I guess you can't square the top one because that's not the answer. Because if we fill them in at the top, I know that mm -hmm. the alpha plus beta is a half from what we've just done. And alpha yeah. beta is minus two. So the answer is not, it's not going to be a quarter, is it? Because you no. can't square, no. So maybe try squaring it then. Yeah, let's try squaring that though, because you're on the right idea. If that alone isn't the solution, but if we go for that, let's just do a quick grid method. Hopefully you've all seen this. So we're going to get alpha squared, alpha beta, alpha beta, beta squared. I, I can see what we've done now because, yeah, you've got that extra bit here. That, yeah, because I want that bit and I've got an extra two lots of alpha beta. So that's what I want. And mm -hmm. I can work, I work that alpha plus beta squared out yeah that's a quarter so if i take off two lots of alpha beta then i've got my answer yeah exactly because if we've got the alpha plus beta squared we start with that it gets you this and we just need to take off that bit there so alpha plus beta is as you say a half and then two alpha beta is going to be uh minus four so hang on that's going to be a quarter plus four which is going to be, my mental math is not great, 17 over 4? Yeah. There you go, it's right over here. Lovely. What about for the second one? Any ideas? And again, I, I, yeah, because it's not, it's not the reciprocal of a half, is it? Because it's not 2. Cause yeah. Because that's not all your abstractions, is it? No, that would be 1 over alpha plus beta, which isn't the same thing. So let's add, yeah, add the fractions then. Yeah, okay, let's try and add the fractions. So let's get a common denominator in each. So let's get alpha beta on the bottom. That'll be beta on the top. Can we do anything with that then? Yeah, you've got them. You've got them up there, haven't you? So the top, so the numerator is a half. And the denominator is minus two. Times the top and bottom by two, you get uh, minus a quarter. The trick with these questions is you are trying to either look for something that you can make using the alpha plus beta or alpha beta. So just like we did with this one. So we, we went with a bit of a guess, alpha plus beta all squared, see where that goes. Ooh, we can realise we can take that off. Or if you've got something like B and there is no obvious link, just try simplifying it. So I've got a common denominator, common denominator 
simplified into this, and then it all fell out. So let's have a go at some questions uh, on your own now. So pause the video here, have a go at those. A and C are exactly the same as what we've just done there. For part B, very similar to part C, so use a similar method for that. Part D, use a similar method for part A. And for E, E is really, really tricky. So if you can get E on your own, that is absolutely fantastic. If you want a clue, though, I would say square it and square root itself. It might seem but contradictory, you're doing the opposite of itself. But try it. Try squaring and square rooting it and then working from there. It is a hard question, that last one, so don't worry if you can't get it. OK, let's have a look at the answers. So first thing, let's actually find alpha plus beta, which is 2, and alpha beta, which is minus 4 over 3. That's going to be our bread and butter for these questions. So A, just like we did in the first one in the example, alpha plus beta all squared, take two lots of alpha beta. That's going to give me 4 plus 8 over 3, which is 20 over 3. Just the thing we like, uh, top heavy fractions rather than mixed numbers or decimals, really. So always try and give your answers in top heavy fractions if possible. Uh, part B, we can simplify this one by doing common denominator. That gets us alpha squared plus beta squared all over alpha beta. Well, fortunately, we've already worked out what alpha squared plus beta squared is. It's 20 over 3. So that's 20 over 3 all over minus 4 over 3. And that gets you minus 5 if you tap into your calculator. C, just to get 4, B over alpha over alpha over, uh, alpha times beta, which is 2 over minus 4 over 3, which is minus 3 over 2. For D, very similar to the first one. So we're going to cube everything. So alpha plus beta all cubed. And if you expand that out, you will notice that it is just going to be minus three lots of alpha beta times alpha plus beta. Oh, there's some messy. Yeah, you've done you've done that in the bottom right, haven't you? There's all that factorizing yeah. you've done. Yeah, I did it in the bottom right, just so you can see what the full expansion is. So you see the full expansion and you can see we're trying to get rid of all these bits here. But you can easily work those out because if you factorize that, you can take an alpha plus beta, uh, alpha plus beta as a factor. You're left with an alpha beta and a, a three as well. But that's all stuff that you can just substrate in. So it's a bit tricky, that one. But if you expanded that, hopefully you'd have recognized what you can take out. Right, for this last one then, this is what I meant by squaring and square rooting it. So I've just said just squared it and put the square root on. If you expand out the square bit, you get alpha squared plus beta squared, take two alpha beta. We can rewrite that, because that's quite similar to what we had in part one, as alpha plus beta all squared, take four lots of alpha beta. And then everything there is numbers that we've got. So we can sub in two, sub in minus four over three, work it out, and you get two root 21 all over three. Again, try and keep things as thirds if possible, uh, and in a fraction. We try not to do over decimal approximations unless the question asks us to. That was quite tough, that. But, yeah, if you managed to have a go and managed to get somewhere with that, well done. Yeah, don't worry if you couldn't get that one, because, as I say, even we'd struggle with that one. It'd take us a good few minutes to work that one out. Right, let's try and bring everything we've done together. So, given that we've got a quadratic 2x squared, take 13x plus 15 equals 0, uh, that has roots alpha and beta, find a quadratic with the root 1 over alpha and 1 over beta. So this is a bit more like how an exam question would be worded uh, based on what we've already been doing so far. So always start off with working out our alpha plus beta and our alpha beta. So alpha plus beta is minus b over a, so that's going to be minus of minus 13, which is 13 over 2. And then c over a is 15 over 2. And I want to find 1 over alpha and 1 over beta. So I'm going to be again working out what the sum of the roots are. So the sum of the roots is 1 over alpha plus 1 over beta. And I want the product of the roots 1 over alpha times 1 over beta. This one's easy enough to work out. We've already did that before. That's just going to give me alpha plus beta all over alpha beta. So alpha plus beta is the 13 over 2. The alpha beta is 15 over 2, and that's going to give me 13 over 15. This is just 1 over alpha beta, because you can just times the top two numbers together, times the bottom two numbers together. And that is just the reciprocal of this, so that's going to be 2 over 15. 
Now from here then, I'm going to be trying to match this up with a quadratic. Because again, I know that's got to be minus b over a. And that's got to be c over a. So because they've got the same denominator, I can probably figure out that a is going to be 15. B is going to be the negative of the numerator for this one. So that's going to be minus 13. And C is going to be the numerator for that one, which is 2. So my new quadratic is going to be 15x squared minus 13x plus 2 equals 0. Now, that would have been really difficult to do, even if you solved the roots and worked it out backwards there. But you can see how much simpler and how much faster that was using the methods we've done before rather than doing it the other method. And especially if you were told not to work out the roots, this is pretty much the only method you can use. That's quite smart, that. And you did it yeah, it was quite quick. I can see and you, your answer. I can see where you sum the product because you found the sum of the product of the old equation and then mm -hmm. found the sum of the product of the roots of the new equation. That's, that's smart, that. Yeah, and you can do the same thing for all of them. So rather than roots 1 over alpha and 1 over beta, it could have been 2 alpha and 2 beta, which is very much like what we had right at the very beginning. Remember, we looked at those transformations. Same kind of idea. Um, but obviously, these are a little bit harder to understand conceptually as a transformation. 2 alpha and 2 beta, you can sort of see that would be a transformation uh, stretch, scale factor 2 in the x direction. These are not really... Uh, any simple transformation like that. You can't quite use the same conceptual way of thinking about it. Last thing then, here's two for you to have a go, just like we've done before. So work out what alpha plus beta is and alpha beta is for each of these two, and then work through it. First one's very similar to the one we've just done as a practice. Second one is a bit different, but it talks you through a few different steps. So have a go at those two yourself. OK, so let's have a look at some answers then. So alpha plus beta was 4. Alpha beta is also 4. So we can add these two together. We get alpha squared plus beta squared all over alpha beta. Hopefully you remember before, alpha squared plus beta squared is alpha plus beta all squared. Take two lots of alpha beta. You can sub all your numbers in and you get 2. So minus b over a is going to be 2. The product times them together gets you alpha over beta over alpha over beta, which is just 1. So C over A is 1. Now we've got a few options here because neither of these are fractions. We can just say A is going to be 1 in this case. B is therefore going to be minus 2 and C is going to be 1. So therefore you'll get Z squared take 2Z plus 1 equals 0. Doesn't matter if you used X instead. They're not too fussed about that. You do definitely need the equals 1 because it's got to be an equation. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you pick something different as A so long as your B and C are correct as well because just like we said before there's lots of different quadratics that will all have these solutions so you could have had 2z squared take 4z plus 2 equals 0 if you wanted we just picked the simplest version for our answer and then for the second one alpha plus beta is 2 alpha beta is 4 so alpha squared plus beta squared is just this again that gets you minus 4 the sum is therefore minus 4 equals minus b over a. The product is going to be alpha squared plus uh, alpha squared beta squared, which is the same as alpha beta all squared. So that's 4 squared, which is 16. And that's going to be our c over a. So again, neither of these are fractions. So we can just treat a as 1. b is going to be 4. c is going to be 16. So we get z squared plus 4z plus 16 equals 0. Again, make sure you've got your 0. Doesn't matter if you've used x. And it doesn't matter if it's a multiple of this either. Super. So I hope you enjoyed that lesson there that, um, that Connor's done. That is actually taken from one of the lessons you'll do uh, in the Further Mathematics course. We usually do it around Christmas time, uh, either December or January. It depends when we're doing it. So, yeah, well done if you managed to keep up with that. It's, it's an interesting topic. If you didn't like all this abstract algebra idea, then half the Further Maths course is looking at interesting stuff uh, that builds on your GCSE and A-level knowledge. I usually see the A-level maths as like a, a corridor from your GCSE and then further maths seems to split off in all these interesting areas. So I'll have a look at this uh, in a bit more detail and I'll, I'll use it again in year two with you so with trigonometry and some really interesting stuff, uh, complex numbers that you might have seen or might not, matrices. And uh, that takes up half the course. And then for the other half, we look at uh, some more mechanics. So looking at energy and collisions and then 
we do uh, a quarter of the course in discrete mathematics. So it's like how a sat nav works and starts looking at business models. So yeah, if you really enjoy mathematics, then obviously further maths is for you. If you're looking at doing a course in maths, physics, engineering, uh, even economics because of the decision maths, I'd consider strongly further maths as an option uh, for you. All right, so thanks for joining us then. If you have any questions, do feel free to get in contact with us. Otherwise, hopefully we'll see you in September.